Banjo Dreamy is definitely one of the most unique ROM hacks I've ever played. It takes everything you know and would expect from a banjo game and warps it into a completely new experience. Right off the bat, boom, you're thrown into this magical dream world with no context or story. You meet up with Bottles who tells you that Lago, not Gruntilda, is the big bad boy and you gotta stop him. Why is he doing this? What does he want? How can a toilet make an entire video game? Who cares, just play the fucking game, you dipass. This hack just oozes charm and personality and each level has so many different areas to explore. Take Highlight Heights for example. When you enter the area, the first thing you see is this giant mansion in the middle of the level. When you explore it, there's some platforming to do, there's snow enemies to fight, the area is winter themed, and you would expect the rest of the level to be like this. But then you literally walk next door and enter a building with a basement full of fucking aliens. There are UFOs, the whole place looks just like Area 51, you can hang out with the butt ugly Martians, and then, before you know it, you're in Christmas Candyland like, what the fuck, how the hell did I even get here? That was just one level, and not only is almost every world like this, but they all just look so fucking gorgeous. Like seriously, this has to be one of the most beautiful ROM hacks that I've ever seen. If I could have passionate loving sex with a ROM hack, I... I'm not gonna finish- I'm coming out of the video. One of the most interesting aspects about this game are the notes. Why the notes? Well, as it turns out, collecting notes is the only way to progress in this game. That's right, jiggies don't exist anymore, get the fuck out of here. Now to the people who've played Banjo before, this may seem like a red flag, but thankfully Lago has streamlined the note system and made it a lot more bearable. For the most part. I'll say what he changed in a moment, but first, let me explain how Banjo's note system works for the people who aren't familiar with it. In the original game, there are 100 notes scattered throughout each world that you have to collect. This sounds simple enough, just get all the notes and you win, but of course, there's a catch to this. Every time you leave the level or die, the game will save the total amount of notes you've collected and then reset all the notes in the level. And if you want to save a higher note score than the previous attempt, then you have to collect more notes than before. This means that if you died with 89 notes, then you have to collect 90 notes or more in order to save a better score. And no, you can't just collect the notes you missed to get a better score. You have to go around the entire level again and recollect every note just to get a higher note score. Now when it comes to the original game, this isn't a problem for me cause I'm a freaking epic awesome sauce gamer and I've never died in a game and in real life before. But for the stupid babies who can't even comprehend how to hold an N64 controller, I can see why this can be a problem. ROM hacks on the other hand are a completely different story. Whenever I play a new ROM hack, it's always incredibly infuriating to play through a ball-bustingly hard level for 2 or 3 hours, only to die with 99 notes and be forced to collect them all over again. Thankfully, Lago designed Banjo Dreamy around the note system and made it a lot less frustrating since notes are the main collectibles of the game. Even though the game still resets the notes when you die or leave the level, you only have to collect 25 notes instead of 100. Not only that, but most levels are structured to make collecting notes more simple. A big problem that I tend to have with Banjo ROM hacks is that it can be very easy to miss a handful of notes in these huge sprawling worlds. In Banjo Dreamy however, almost all of the worlds are formatted so that there is one main area with three different sub-areas to explore. The main area has 10 notes to collect while the sub-areas have 5 notes each. This little design choice helps the player understand which areas they should find notes in. Since you always know that each sub-area has 5 notes in them, you can keep track of how many notes you've collected while you're in one. Then once you collect them all, you don't need to explore the area anymore. It's a very clever way to help the player keep track of what areas they still need to explore. Oh, and another thing to mention is that bottomless pits don't kill you like in the original game. Now you just warp to the beginning of the level, though lava pits can kill you, but I'll talk about that later. Instead, I'll discuss something that annoyed me when I first played the game, which is the backtracking. For the first three worlds of the game, you won't be able to collect all the notes in your first visit. You'll only be able to get 15 notes each since you won't have the necessary moves to access some of the sub-areas. This means that when you revisit the levels later on with all the moves you need, you will have to collect a lot of the notes again. Thankfully, once you complete the fourth world, you'll have all the moves you need to 100% the previous levels. And when you're done with that, you won't need to worry about backtracking for the rest of the game. 
What I don't understand is that Lago made several attempts to design the game around the note system to make it less annoying, yet he forces the player to backtrack and recollect a lot of the notes. You would think he would design the game to avoid this problem entirely, but I guess not. Another problem that I have with Banjo Dreamy is the tough difficulty spikes that are in the second half of the game. I feel like the first 5 worlds in the game are balanced fairly well, but once you get to the 6th world, Memory Meadow, that's when the game starts to throw these crazy curveballs out of nowhere. Aw oh, shit. Some enemies start to deal 2 damage now, which means you'll die in about 4 hits. There are moments when you're swimming where you can barely make it to the surface of the water without drowning, and there's this one section where you're platforming over lava, and if you fuck up just once, then you're dead and you lose all of your progress. Normally, I wouldn't mind levels being this hard, but I think throwing all of these obstacles at once, when the levels so far weren't this difficult, is a bit unfair. Now I know that there were some tough sections in some of the other levels. For example, Worlds 3 and 5 both have a sub-area where you're platforming over lava, but those were only one section of each level. The other areas in both levels were fairly easy in comparison, so if you wanted to play through them as safely as possible, then you could just complete the hard parts first, and then breeze through the rest of the level. In Memory Meadow, on the other hand, most of the world is consistently hard so you're constantly on edge throughout the level. And keep in mind, dying once resets all of your progress so even if you finish the hardest part first, you can still die just as easily later on in the level and be forced to do everything all over again. I know it sounds like I'm being a big baby and I just need to get good at the game, but I just think that this world shouldn't be as hard as it is. If this was the last level, then yeah, I would understand why it would be so tough. But unfortunately, it's not, and the two worlds that come after Memory Meadow are even more difficult and frustrating. I guess I should start with Daybreak Barracks. Now, this level isn't challenging, as a matter of fact, it's actually easier than Memory Meadow. However, there is a huge problem with this level that makes it one of the worst worlds in the entire game. Remember earlier in the video when I complimented Banjo Dreamy for including these sub-areas? You know, the ones that always hit 5 notes in them and made the exploration much more simple and less time consuming? Well, throw those right into the garbage cause they're not in this world. Instead, notes are just scattered throughout the level, which can make the exploration a bit annoying. The reason why the sub-areas are so important in this game is that you always know how many notes are in them. Even if the game hides a note or two in a dark remote corner somewhere, you will know if you're missing them since you always know that there are 5 notes in a sub-area. And if you're missing any notes in a level, you know not to look for them in any of the sub-areas you've completed already, which saves a lot of time. But in Daybreak Barracks, if you're missing one last note, well, it could be anywhere in the level. It can be in the pirate ship, it can be on the castle, it can be on the edge of a cliff, hell, it could even be in the hub world for fuck's sake. And the thing is, I do like this world. I love how it perfectly recreates the medieval setting that Rare put into games like Diddy Kong Racing, and the fact that it's supposed to be a complete contrast to the last level is a really cool idea. And the level itself is still fun to play through, it's just that without the sub-areas, it can make searching for notes a lot more irritating. It's just weird to me that Lago would design every world in this game with these sub-areas in mind, except for the last two levels. But that's all I have to say about Daybreak Barracks. Now, it's time to talk about the last level, Nightfall Fortress. What's so bad about Nightfall Fortress, some of you may be asking? Well, remember when I said Memory Meadow was a really difficult level? That was me being a comedic genius because Memory Meadow is a complete joke when compared to Nightfall Fortress. Wanna know why? Well, it's because the entire level is surrounded by lava. Yeah, this is humanly possible. You know, I don't think I need to explain why I hate this world, but if you really don't understand, then I'll show you what it's like playing through this level.
And believe it or not, that's only just the beginning. Like I've said before, there aren't any sub-areas in this level, so have fun looking for notes while you're platforming through hell. But another problem that I have with this level is the camera. There is a very specific section of the level where the camera is set up in such a way where you can't even see where you're platforming. And if you fail to land on the platform, then you'll fall right into lava. This is actually a problem I've had throughout the game where objects and platforms are right outside the camera's view so you can't even see them. I was willing to forgive the game since it never happened too often, but in this instance, I have to bring it up. And I know there's a way to set up the camera in Banjo's backpack so you can position it in very specific locations and angles, so it's not like it's impossible to fix this issue. Just reposition the camera so you can actually see what the hell is happening and problem solved. Oh, and one last thing. If you think you can just skip this level and waltz straight to the end of the game, you can't. In order to see the true ending, you need to collect all 200 notes. That's right, you need to collect every goddamn note in the goddamn game. Well, it's a good thing I always 100% every banjo game I play. Imagine playing the hack up to this point thinking you won't need every note in the entire game only to find out that you can't even get past the final note door. Imagine being the guy who got 199 notes and thought that was enough to beat the game. Whoever they are, they probably feel like the biggest dumbest idiot in the whole wide world. Man, I'm so glad I'm not that guy. You know, throughout this review, I feel like I've criticized Banjo Dreamy more than I've complimented it. And while I still stand by everything I've said, I think it's important to mention that I still think this game is great, especially the first half of the game. It has some of the most unique and creative worlds I've ever played in a ROM hack and the presentation in all of them are incredible. Lago did a pretty good job at streamlining the note system to make the game a lot more enjoyable and less annoying. And even though I don't like the tough difficulty spikes and the frustrating design choices that are in the second half of the game, I still think the good parts outweigh the bad. And it's not like I completely hate the second half of the game. I still had fun playing through Memory Meadow and Daybreak Barracks even though I do have some problems with them. But not Nightfall Fortress, fuck that level. If you're a huge Banjo fan like me, then you gotta play Banjo Dreamy. It's one of the most original and memorable ROM hacks I've ever played. Just be prepared to get completely anally penetrated by the end of the game. <laughs> 